Hello, Steve. Hello, Jill. It's time to game classy. Oh yeah, and the Kings of War Army was, and the Kings of War event was really cool. The um, the guy who was running it had like a his own keg of beer that he made, and it was Belgian triple, which is my favorite kind. And he was just like pumping it out, just giving out cups. What do you got running over there? It's a fan. You can turn it off. I don't know how to turn it off. Oh right, that's right. You don't <laughs> live here. <laughs> <laughs> you could turn it off. Uh, I don't know how. No, the uh, the King's War was really cool. The the guy had the beer, and he was, they were just giving out cups. And I was I was hanging out with Matt Listener, and he's a really cool guy. And he was just like, "Come here, you gotta get beer." So we were drinking. It was really cool. Um, they had a lot of players. It was weird though this year for the the whole like fantasy room was really it was like a really weird vibe. Because, like, all of the fantasy players were basically, it was, like, cut in three. Because you had the you had the Kings of War players, and I think, I don't know, it was, like, 20, 30 players there. And then there was, like, the Age of Sigmar players who were there, and I don't know how many, there wasn't that many there. Were they all grooming their very fancy mustaches they were, for their special rules? <laughs> yes, they were grooming their, I didn't even bother, really, to look that much. And then there was um, the Warhammer 9th ninth edition ninth age? guys. Ninth Age guys were there, and they had about, like, I don't know, 10 to 20 guys there playing that it was it was weird i could feel the tension in the room the, the fractured fantasy community it was there was some tension in the room i was like "Ooh, i gotta get i gotta get, get out of here before rumble starts before some before some demon nets start get thrown <laughs> around over here yeah anyway welcome to game classy i'm joe this is steve hello say there you go can can we're gonna we're gonna talk uh some 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 adepticon right now uh that was the big thing last week a dirt which Steve traveled all the way out to Mount Prospect, did not stop at Adepticon. Yep. Even though, <laughs> well, first of all, let me tell you this. To all the all the listeners out there who were at Adepticon and said hi to me, hello! It was a great time. Met a ton of people there. Um, and a lot of fans of the podcast. So that was really cool. Well, I mean, maybe if we were in the UK, I'd be more interested in this than some of the listeners. Why? I don't know. Accents. <laughs> Matt hit, Matt's from the UK. He had Fuck. an accent. Yeah. I missed out on an accent. Yeah, you did. Because I just want to hear people be like, oh, I like your show. You know, it's real good. No, no that, that's what he was like. Right. Well, it was a little deeper. He's he's like a, the, the man's like a giant. I was just trying to pander to James. I'm sorry. <laughs> the face you, the face you just, the face, the face. Jo- All right. So the, the face Joe just made was. Nothing short of orgasmic. It was for me. It was <laughs> it was amusement and it, disgust it at was, the same time. I really enjoyed it, and I, not, yeah, I just I really liked it. Yeah. It was nice. It made me feel good. Like it actually, I actually just felt good. Yeah. Uh, I haven't felt good in a while, but that really that brought you back. It, it brought me back from the edge. Brought you back. From the- <laughs> no, Matt's Matt's like a giant bear of a human being. He's that's like, uh, Matt Lee. Yeah, Matt Lee. He's like he has the sweet Mattel logo for yeah, his uh, Facebook. Like six foot something or other, giant beard. See, now he would intimidate me. I don't know about uh, that. No, <laughs> um, great guy. Uh, we hung around on Saturday at Adepti- at Adepticon. Uh, so I don't know where to begin. Um, I'm just kidding. I'm surprised you met anyone who listened to the podcast, sir. Oh no, that was a lot. Is it just people we know? <laughs> no, it was like actual like listener listeners all th- all throughout the the events. Um, so uh, I guess I could start off with with myself getting reamed at bolt action yes! this year. I got I got smoked. And I, it, was, it actually wasn't that bad. I ended You're up talking all that trash. I ended up with a minor victory, uh, a draw, and a major loss. That sounds like a terrible record. <laughs> it was all right. Um, <laughs> You're trying to downplay it. No, it was, that was, that was that's a rough record. Uh, let me tell you this: um, the first players that we went up against. Uh, that we drew against were uh, were actual. Uh, uh, they they ran my exact list from last year. Me and Tim's exact <laughs> list from last year, and I was like, "Holy shit!" That's awesome. That was like, and I was really hoping they would body you. No, no that no. would be, that would have been the best. No, it's it was well, you know, I could continue my complaints about the 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 bolt action uh, problems with the tournament. As I say every fucking year, but the uh, the the bigger the bigger problem this year was the fact that um, 
they fixed a lot of the problem. Like what we were seeing last year was like crazy scenarios. Like, oh, there's a cat loose on the battlefield, and whoever can catch this cat gets the cat. Oh, was that actually point. a thing? That was a thing last year. Wow. Yeah, it was awful. Um, no, this year it was it was um, all the scenarios were really solid, and it was it was more one on one. The only the biggest problem I had was that the the terrain was really wonky this year. So like some players played on like tables that had really easy terrain to play on. My first table had a river right across the center and the river was like 12 inches wide. It was, and like, that's a very big river. And if you're, it was not 12, it was probably like mm, nine inches. It was a big river. And, uh, the the way we were playing is is that you know it was difficult terrain you had to go over it and you could only move at half speed so was, and the whole scenario was get across the board so it was just a big slog fest in the center of the table because no one could get across the river in the amount of time it took you to get a, and it was just a, it was a, a mess um, the other scenarios were all fine uh, the other I'm, I'm going to bring it up real quick because I want to make sure I, I get their names down because <laughs> I, I I wanted to make sure I I talked to them because they are listeners of the podcast. So the they, guys who copied your list? No, 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 no. Oh. The um, the guys who utterly tabled me. Yeah. Third game. <laughs> yeah. Was it Anthony and someone else? Uh, no, it was. I thought it was Anthony. Nicholas. It was Ant. It, it, it is Anthony. Yeah. It's. Not, I was thinking Anthony Carroll. No, it's Anthony Pizzera, and uh, I can't remember his the other guy's name. Now I can't think of it. Was it Nick? May have been. I don't know. Um, but yeah, Anthony. They brought like a rock hard list and i'm very proud of them it's not like <laughs> it's like you get beat by a bad list you're like fuck it was just bad rolling or anything like that no they came out and it was just like by t- turn two me and tim were like well <laughs> that's about it folks did they win the tournament oh uh, no they didn't actually um i don't even know who won. who cares who won but it was um well i mean you only care if it's someone you know that's yeah oh yeah yeah I, <laughs> But uh, we actually lost out on Best Painted, too. So oh, the way the, the way daggers. I look at it is... The well, Daggers. You, I know. You got wrecked. I know. Well, we tied... Like There was like a tie for Best Painted, and we ended up... Uh, it ended up going to someone else. But uh, the way I look at it is Tim lost us the games, and uh, I lost us the Best Painted. That's <laughs> the way I look at it. So Your, your guys' weaknesses did not cover your strengths? No, we did not cover our strengths at all. No, we're gonna come back with a vengeance next year. That's the plan. Okay. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna come back with a. You're vengeance. gonna paint those swastikas extra sharp on your Germans. Extra sharp. No, we're gonna <laughs> we're gonna do always to the right. Yes, never to the left. Never to the left. Yes, uh, to quote 1776. Ever to the right, never to the left. I don't. That's you never like 1776. I don't even know what that musical what it is. about the Constitution. Nope. Nope. Don't even know what it is. Uh, Although everyone's j- everyone's jizzing about the Alexander Hamilton musical. Yeah. Uh, I like heard the first song and it's rap, I guess. It's seems kind of it's really like hip hop. Yeah, I don't know. It no, it's really, really, good. really good. I mean, you don't like rap, so why would you care? Yeah, I or you know. don't like hip hop music, or you don't like music. Right. Yeah. All of those things are true. Yeah. <laughs> and you don't like American early American politics. No. Or also true. Or bank. You I also I don't like America. <laughs> you like you like dueling though. I do like dueling, and there's and, a, and there's dueling. Hamilton here. did duel. Yeah, not as much as Jackson. Jackson was I think categorically insane. Yeah, I think he was actually an insane person. Yeah, yeah. I was uh, just reading up on uh, good old Andrew Jackson. Yeah, the other Jackson's day. a was a fucking nutto, dude. Yeah. He was crazy. It, yeah, I'm, I'm interested in big personalities though. So if they happen, yeah. to, you know, a lot of times they fall in. They Hamil- fall in Hamilton's a big personality. Yeah, I, that, I, is, that is true. I'm Not actually wrong. reading his biography right now, so it's just, it's pretty good. I I quite enjoy it. He had the first American uh, uh, sex scandal. Ooh, yes. Ooh. It's he was. He, I guess I guess Ben Franklin was totally. It was totally okay for him well, banging Franklin, all those hookers. Yeah, well, Ben Franklin doesn't matter. He's it's because he's, he's Ben Franklin. He's, he's Ben like, Franklin. You can't touch him. He's he's, he's 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 as untouchable now as he was then. He was in. He was. You know, he had gout and he went to France and had sex with a bunch of French ladies. It was okay. It was great. I think he had sex with any woman who said like actually. I think he just had sex with every possible woman he could, like literally everyone he could. Why not? The and man... drank a fuck ton of beer. And the man invented electricity. Why not? <laughs> he invented it. Yeah. He did. He did. Yeah, that's right. Electricity is an American invention. <laughs> he invented electricity, bifocals. And flying kites. <laughs> and flying kites and uh, uh, potbelly stoves. He also invented those. Uh, yeah. There you go right and there. And chopping wood. And ch- no, that was Abraham Lincoln invented the chopping wood. No, it was Benjamin Franklin. He uh, gave it to Lincoln. Oh, okay. That's how it worked. Yeah. yeah. 
60 years after his death. Yep. He just, he passed it forward. He like, Lincoln, Link, when Lincoln sat down in the Oval Office, he found a little note that says, to Abe. And he's like, who, could, who would ruin this? And he's like, how could Franklin have known? <laughs> Chopping wood with an axe. Yeah, see? Splitting rails. So wait, wait a second. Wait, pot-bellied stove? Pot, stove, stovepipe hat? Illuminati confirmed! Yes. <laughs> Illuminati. <laughs> um, I really like that you lost in bolt action. It makes me really happy. I lose. Uh, no, you were you were you were talking all sorts of I smack. Always, I always talk smack. What can I say? It was good. Yeah. No, that that list we played the third list. No, the, the second game, um, we could have had like a major victory, but Tim fucked it up. I'm not gonna lie. Tim doesn't listen Damn. to his podcast. I'm Damn. just gonna say he outright did Throwing not your partner right under the bus. He did not listen to me. He made a he made a, a, a bush league move, and I I told him I said don't make that move. It's a bush league move. <laughs> it's bush league, man. <laughs> and uh, yeah, he totally didn't make the move that he needed to make, and it cost us uh, a major victory. We got a minor victory, so right. whatever. It was kind of as I say, bush league. Um, Fair enough. Well, I mean, with with degrees of victory scoring, if you get two my, major victories and a loss, you can like win the whole tournament because, as we've discussed before, you know. The tournament scoring structure. I all honestly, up. I honestly don't think that that tournament, that bolt action tournament, actually had like any sort of like real scoring. They just made it up as they I went along. I think they were like, I like this guy. These guys are playing. <laughs> I think they based it all off like player scores. Did they still do the stupid shit where it's like it has to be Axis versus allies on each table? No, they didn't this year, which is one part of the things hey, that I like. That's good because I was expecting just to play against Axis players, and I was like, our list is gonna fucking dominate. And then the first two players, like. Then the second player we play against is you as a as a, another U.S. Army, and we're like, "What? Nice, okay. nice." Didn't you say? Uh, aren't, didn't you say the Americans are OP, or is it the the um the 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 Americans and British are both OP? I mean, they're not. It's not terrible. The way that the meta is kind of shifted, it's kind of like people are now if they're playing in tournament, they play like optimal lists, so it kind of negates OP. Hey. We got to play the optimal load. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But I mean, the if, if you're playing in a pickup game, like just like a friendly and like you just write up your list with whatever you got, U.S. is going to dominate every time. Yeah. So yeah. they're OP. Yeah, exactly. But I mean, like, but if you're playing against a guy who knows how to play the German list, um, you can bring like an average and a, a, a top tier U.S. list and probably the Germans would beat it. Okay. If But the that German list is super specific. Okay. All right, so enough of that bullshit. Um, store was really cool this year. Huge. Uh, it was huge. Huge win. Huge win. Uh, <laughs> the Arena Rex guys were there. Got to talk to all of them, and they were, like, super friendly. Like, they really love this podcast. Like, I, w- I really want to. I like. Okay, so I am, I am going to Adepticon next year. I now have a completed army, so the thing that was keeping me away from Adepticon is no longer, is no longer a viable excuse. I have a completed Kings of War army, and I'm going to endeavor to also complete my Arena Rex forces, Mercs, and... Ooh, is that Superman? No, it's just like a hunting horn. Oh, I thought it was... <laughs> Say what you will, I don't I don't like those movies very much, but that is an excellent Superman oh, theme song. It's a fantastic one. Yeah. Anyway, um, so... I no longer have an excuse. There's no buffer. I have to be there. I have a completed army for something, but I'm going to try and finish other stuff because I want to play some Arena Rex. I want to play some Dark Age. I want to play some Wrath of Kings, and I want to play some Kings of War. Like, it's going to fucking happen. Like, I want to do all of the things. Well, this year, like, they didn't... Arena Rex didn't have any events. Okay. And so, but that's like... However, I was talking with the guys. That play... That that store was just jam-packed and sold out, like, every day. Yeah, it's it's going to probably be the next big game in the Chicagoland area. Good, just because of how many like they were selling the starter sets, those three pack starter sets, like hotcakes, like hotcakes, Jerry, hotcakes. Good. Yeah, they are. Uh, they're, they're fucking fantastic guys too. Like I was buying a figure, and they were like, they were like, oh, you don't have to. I'm like, no. Take my money, <laughs> take my money. <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm really excited. I like I really want to get that uh that stuff built. That's the next uh thing I'm going to be working on. Uh, Wrath of Kings and Arena Rex right now because like oh, but what about the big news? Which big news? The big big news that I got from Ronnie. Oh God! <laughs> All right, so I I might be the first person breaking this. Probably. Are not. you allowed to? <laughs> I well he. Ronnie sat there and told me. Oh, okay. Uh, pretty much in a they said probably by the end of this year, maybe next year. Uh, next Kings of War Kickstarter, 10 millimeter Kings of War. 
So they're going to do a War Master scale. Yeah, that's fucking ridiculous. I'm so excited about uh, it. I, I have, you have no idea how, <laughs> how ridiculously excited the, I am about it. The thing it. that's sweet is in addition to being able to play with the best rule system ever conceived, War Master, uh, you can also play Kings of War because Kings of War actually just scales down well, that's perfectly. What, and that's what he was saying. He says it's, it's just it basically the rule book for it would just be a bigger version of Kings of War. Uh, with centimeters. Yeah, with I don't even th- I don't know. He I mean, you could do half inches too. It doesn't fucking matter. He didn't even say, but I mean, it was like it would essentially be King's War, but just like on a grander scale. It's really so. exciting. Plus, I like because like this table I have this much smaller table. This is a t- completely acceptable size table for a ten millimeter war game. Yeah, like, it really is. Totally is. Like it's. I, I, this table is really small. I feel really like. Yeah, like close I, to you. I don't know if I like. I that. really like it. Like it's. It, I thought it was super small. It's. It's just. It's super small compared to the last table. Because mm-hmm. the, the last table I had was like gigantic. Uh, I, I'd like a table a little bit bigger than this, but I, I've I've been growing on this one a lot. <laughs> yeah. I mean, uh, so he was saying that you know they're basically just could, because all the Kings of War sculpts are done digitally that they're just going to take the same files and just scale them down. Okay, to, to right. the to the ten mil size and just do it that. Oh, way. they're just gonna be they're just gonna be the Kings of War models. They're at gonna ten be, millimeter. Yeah, ha, that's awesome. <laughs> yeah. So I mean, it's like, I'm I'm sure they're gonna be a little different just because you know you're not gonna be able to have the arms in a specific right, way. Right, right. You know, they'll probably do it in whatever way is they're gonna do it. But I the mean, question is, is, do I just get an undead army at ten millimeter? <laughs> I mean, man, it's just like I well, I have so many ten millimeter figures at home as is, but it's just like. That Kickstarter will be sweet. Plastic 10 millimeter. I'll probably do orcs. Oh, yeah. I mean, orcs would probably be really cool, and you could combine them. You know, I could combine them at least with, like, the Wine Warmaster stuff and just I don't fill know. out anything I need. Obviously, I mean, I love 10, 10 millimeter is my favorite scale. Like, not close. It's my favorite scale. <laughs> everything about it is just, like, exciting to me. Like, the way it looks on the table, the terrain, because the terrain, like, feels right. Like, even when it's pro- appropriately, I don't know if you've ever experienced it, but for me, like, when I'm playing a 28 mil game, a lot of times I'm playing, like, Warhammer, uh, specifically Warhammer, uh, a block, block game. There'll be, like, a castle or, like, a building or something, and it's the right scale. But while you're moving your figures around, it just feels wrong. Eh. It just you kind of you look over it and you're like, eh. Like buildings are really weird in 28 mil to me. But like you know, trees and stuff. That's well, fine. Well, in in block combat games like that, you don't want a lot of terrain, cause right? It fucks up the game really bad. But in Warmaster, like, you can do a lot of yeah, terrain. I mean, you have one tree stand in the center of the table. I fucked up the whole game. <laughs> fuck, you're just like, well, fuck this. Oh, I'm he's not playing even, Beastman. I'm gonna uh, fucking fuck lose. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, that, exactly. So like, means, you have to have your castle, but it's in the corner. Yeah, it's like, like it's, it's like sh- decorating the yeah, table it's rather just than decorating. Yeah. yeah. But like I, I the, the the terrain was always cool in War Master because you could do like the the moving formations where you like going like going like around buildings, stuff, yeah. snaking. Yeah, it's really fucking cool. So yeah, I love everything about ten millimeter. I love the buildings, the terrain. Like I'm super fucking stoked about it. Yeah. Um, I really, really. Ooh, oh man. <laughs> I, I, it's, I'm very excited to see this Kickstarter. I'm gonna save some ducats for it. Uh, yeah, I am too. I mean, my my hobby. Like the thing that's nice is uh. One thing that's nice about having the the fact that I spent so much fucking money on models that have been sitting in my closet is that I don't have I don't need to spend money on models because I have so many fucking models. It's just like my God, everything. What are, you, what are you talking about? Uh, you know, there's a thing where if you have like a huge amount of unfinished tasks, you shouldn't add more stuff to the tasks. W- w- wait, I'm. It's. It's a th- I, it's an, it's a new concept I'm working with. <laughs> I, I'm not quite sure what you're talking it's, about. It's a new concept I'm working with where you finish <clears throat> all of the things you own before you buy something new. Okay, I I don't remember who I was talking. It was <laughs> it was someone I was I was hanging out with at Adepticon, and we were talking about and like I was saying like, oh yeah, I got a ton of that stuff. I got like six totes worth, and they were like. You you really do have a problem, don't you? I'm like, <laughs> I, yeah, I, I, you, I do. You have a problem. <laughs> I, I have an insane problem. It's yeah. not nice at all. Uh, but, but yeah, the uh, the yeah, the, so um, the, the, that was like the the thing that I was just like, oh, <laughs> yeah, that's fucking awesome. And I said I will be there. I want to meet everyone. I want to meet all the listeners. I want to see you. I want to see your game. I'm going to talk shit about it. Well, what I what I what I would like to do, even if you're playing Kings War, I'm still going to talk shit about it. What I would like to do is I would really like us to do like a small event just for listeners who want to come. Because I mean, like I think I talked to like eight or nine people who listen to the podcast, like a special classy event for yeah, classyites only. But I mean, yeah, I mean, but nothing like like ridiculous, like a tournament. Like I don't like 
Like That sounds boring. I, exactly. <laughs> There's a bunch of tournaments that they can already do. I know, but I would like to have something where they could kind of interact with it. Like, maybe, like, we run an RPG or something. Like, a, like a one-off RPG where you just DM, you know, and I could play in it and do whatever. But with something like that where we can have, like six or seven people playing at the same time okay and we could have something going on with that I all mean, right yeah i could see that yeah or just like a hangout so like maybe if only like four or five people want to play and some people just want to hang around in the back and whatever we could record it put it on on the internet all whatever right. all right I, pick I, up I, th- I think we could do something like that and yeah. have fun or with we it. could just have like a q and a no, that'd be dumb. Dude, no way. People have they have burning questions that they can't just write to us on Facebook and ask. <laughs> Every one of those questions is usually about dicks. Well, we need to give them all the, the answers. answers. All the dick answers. Yes, all of the answers about dicks. Yeah. Are they big th- dicks? Are they small dicks? Oh, um, Drop Zone Commander. Um, they had some. Of, they had. All I the... saw Cliff was playing games of it, so it, it is. It is a thing. People do play that game. Oh yeah, there was a. There was a. There was a. It was a, a small group. I think there was probably like ten to twelve people playing. They had the tournament out there that was, that was in the main hall. Um, really nice stuff. The the train looked great on it. Luckily, you know what? I can put that off now because there's going to be the Kings of War stuff at the small scale. Oh, and the uh, what was it? They had the uh, um, they oh they had the drop the drop ship commander stuff. Drop fleet, drop fleet commander or whatever. That there that one ship. Someone one of the listeners put it on uh the the Facebook. There's that one ship that's painted black. It is the most like boner. My boner was like so engorged seeing it. One of the most beautiful spaceship miniatures I've ever seen. And oh. like it makes the rest of the range look so bad in comparison. And the rest of the range really isn't bad. No. But I'll... this ship was ridiculous. I actually sort of regret not backing it. Uh, I don't regret it because I don't need more stuff. But the uh... I mean, I think you really do. You you oh, yeah. you need a spaceship game. <laughs> well, Dave is Dave bought into it, so he's getting that stuff in. Okay. So I'll at least get to play a the little bit. The Max? Yeah. Okay. The Max is Got it. But they had the stuff. Speaking of which, are they, do they do the hobby night anymore? Um, yeah, most of the time, though, we usually play at the LGS. Uh, yeah, so that's that kind of has taken the place. But I I'm see. sure he'll do one sooner or okay. rather than later. Yeah, I'm looking forward. I want to I come out to the next one. But he, uh, but yeah, seeing the models in person, though, you're like, fuck, those are really nice. <laughs> and the Arena Rex guys, they actually had the, the case out there with all of like the professionally painted stuff in there. And you're looking at it, you're just like, God damn! Oh, dude, that fucking that uh, Medusa? Medusa, fuck that that translucency effect. That was the one Ooh. model that I wanted to uh, to really get, and they were sold out of it every of day. Yeah, the model's amazing. Yeah. The sculpting on it's ridiculous. The the ability to put a paint job on it's ridiculous. Speaking of paint jobs, how about that crystal brush? We'll talk about that. <laughs> we're, we're gonna get to the crystal brush. Uh. Um, yeah, I want to meet the listeners. I want to you know, I want to do something. I definitely, I'm definitely going to Adepticon. Like that's happening next year. It's happening. Kings of War said I'm going to do as many events as I can. I want to fucking play some fucking miniatures games. It's been too long. I've been like passively. You're, you're in on the, the upswing. Hobby. I've been pa- well. The thing I've been like passively in the hobby. Like I've been doing like some miniatures projects here and there. Like I painted a Wrath of Kings army, not mine, but I painted one. Uh, you know, I painted a. I painted a full Vampire Counts army. Not mine, but I painted it. I've been doing a lot of work for other people. Um, so now that I'm finally able to do some work for my own, for my stuff, like I'm really happy that I finished. The, the, this This Undead army has been two years in the fucking making. And it's like... I got them to the point where they were so close to being finished in like a very short period of time. And then I just shelved them and they just sat there. Super close to being done for a year. Like more than a year. Just like all they needed was basing... And that was it. And it just just sat. Yeah. Just sat. I just I just couldn't bring myself to do it. Now I'm I'm finally done with them. It's like fucking like two hundred and forty models. I've often found that basing is like my it's like my crux. Like I just my my cross. I can't I can't do it. Like I just so I've started on all my new armies. The basing is like the first thing that's done after the base code. Oh, yeah. yeah. So it's just get it out of the fucking way because I'm I don't want to do it later. Cause I'm gonna I think I'm gonna do that for my. Uh... My Wrath of Kings. I'm thinking of just doing like doing up the basing and like all the fanciness on the bases first, and then do the models because I got, I have a plan. We'll see if it works out. Yeah, but yeah, I told the arena. I was when I was talking to the arena Rex guys. I basically told them. I said you need to run a tournament next year. Oh yeah, because you need to you need to come up with like a tournament structure so that you know because the Chicago will be playing 
this game. Chicago Land will be playing this game. I think it's brilliant. Like I, I love it. I, I read, I've read the rules like three times. <laughs> I just, I'm so the, the the dynamics of that game, just like the way it feels, the game feel is is exactly what you want. Well, the uh, I I was talking with a with one guy. He was a uh, he, he's a pretty big Chicago Land gamer. I have talked with him before, and I was talking with him about Arena Rex, and he was like, I really like it. You don't need terrain. And I'm like, yeah, you don't need anything. Yeah. You just need your models. Yeah, and they have a really nice play mat with the yeah. arena on it. Yeah. Very cool. Uh, and it's the trap, the pit, the pitfalls and stuff. The best thing about it too is like I see these people starting to get into Guild Ball, and I'm just like, dude, have you not seen Arena Rex? Like, what the hell's wrong with you? I, I'll still, I don't understand Guild Ball. It, the people really like Guild Ball, but they're, I, I don't they're understand. really into it. Really into it. I, I um, it's a fantasy sports ball game. I'm out. Yeah. The. Like, uh, who else was there? Oh, um, 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 Super Dungeon, not Super Dungeon Explorer, uh, but Soda Pop was there. Got to talk with those guys, of course. They got, they're running that new one. Vendor Badge? Uh, Vendor Badge, I did not see there, oh. so. He, I, I didn't see most of the regular crew, so I, I think that they. miss the Vendor Badge. Um, yeah, I, um, they were, they're running that, uh, Rail Wars, uh, Kickstarter now. The, uh, Chibi Western. Oh, right, right, right. Yeah, sci-fi Western game. Yeah! Pew, pew, pew! Pew, pew, pew! And that we'll get into later. Not that game in particular, but... How about uh, Wild West Exodus? Do you see a sweet tournament for that? <laughs> no. Uh, we're, we'll talk about that in a little bit, too. <laughs> like the other segment. And then, uh, yeah. So, uh, the other thing on top... You know, I saw the tournaments and everything like that. Everything's always, like... It's cool to go see the tournaments there, just because you've... Everyone paints their, their crap, and it's maybe not all great painted, but to see tables and tables of painted figures is just really cool to see mm -hmm. um one of the better ones i saw was the people who did the batman game you know the the nigh incomprehensible ruled batman yes. game they had this fantastic table like gotham city style with all the figures like nicely painted out there and i'm like why are you guys wasting your fucking time <laughs> <laughs> i'm like how do you even understand these damn rules I've tried. It makes no sense. I don't know. They just wanted to play with Batman toys, I and, am, they, well, and they and they didn't want to be like you know playing hero clicks. Exactly. <laughs> it's like we have to grid this out. No, it was like really fucking like they had. I guess there's this company that makes these skyscrapers, like like terrain models skyscrapers that have uh, plexiglass on the inside and a light so that you light it up and it looks like the 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 skyscrapers lit up. Damn, and it's really cool looking. That's pretty legit. Yeah. But then, of course, we have the crystal brush. <laughs> people are butthurt about the crystal brush this year. And I'm just wondering why it's taken people this long to kind of realize that the crystal brush is kind of... Well, all miniature painting competitions are kind of a sham. Not really, but I mean... So, I guess the, the big thing this year... There's, it's All right, so I'm just going to... I'll throw out... It is a competition based on subjective values. Yes. Um, my big problem with Crystal Brush is kind of that... Very difficult to call it a competition. Yeah. Well, that too. But my, my bigger issue with Crystal Brush is that it's fan it's fan voting. So, like, people... And this is the, the what happened with the Wapples, that when you're at a Games Day, it's like a beautifully painted Tomb King's army versus a pretty great painted Dark Elf arm, a Dark, El, uh, Dark Eldar army. Like, fantastic paint job. Good paint job. Really good. But what are what is all the fan people gonna pick? Delmar. Dark Eldar. It's forty k because it's forty k. I'm that the Kevin uh, lost a uh, his army didn't even go to the uh, armies, armies on parade, parade because uh, he painted a forty k Eldar army and the store he was he brought his armies on parade to was a fantasy leaning store so they're oh. just like they all voted for the fantasy army which was a Tomb King's army which looked it was it, you know, I'm not gonna shit on the army it looked nice it was. It was just dry brush and inked, but it was done well. So it looked nice, like very crisp on the tabletop. Like it was a good looking army. But like I saw Kevin's army and I saw that army and like compared in, in comparison, the army's dog shit in comparison. Yeah. And but people were just like, I'm voting for this. One guy didn't vote for it because he one guy didn't vote for it because he didn't like Eldar. He's like, I don't like Eldar. I, I mean, that's <laughs> and that's the problem when you have fan voting. That's that's my first issue with it. My second issue is that it's not a painting competition so much as it is a sculpting competition nowadays. It's both. Uh, yes. Yes, it it's is. It's both. You can't paint like crap or sculpt like crap. You have to do both very well. Yes. But Which, you must have sculpting. You must have sculpting. Yes, like, absolutely. And, and the model almost has to be completely hand sculpted. Uh, I think the – well, let me think. 
This year was a scratch sculpt. The year before was a scratch sculpt. And the year before was a scratch mm-hmm. sculpt. The year before that, I think, was also a scratch sculpt. Yeah. So at least four years that I can remember off the top of my head were all scratch sculpt. Uh, grand winners. Grand yeah. winners. Yeah. And that's... So what's... So is this a miniature painting competition or is this a sculpting the, competition? The, I, like, like I said on the Facebook page, the competition is twofold. One, okay. you are, as a, as a competitor, you need to do two things. One, you need to sculpt your model. Yep. Have someone sculpt your model or say you sculpted well, it. Well, and that's, whatever. that's the other thing, too, on top of that. Continue with your Wh- Whatever thought. the case is. And two, you need to paint. You need to use flashy techniques that are going to appeal to the internet demographic. So the challenge is not appealing to judges as much as it is appealing to the internet. Yeah. So what's going to get their attention? Well, it needs to look really cool or specifically like someone like the Daniel Craig Space Marine. Great looking model. It's a very good looking model. Very good paint job. But that model is super eye catching because you look at it and you're like, that's Daniel Craig. <laughs> that, that's like, Daniel Craig. That's Daniel Craig. So like immediately. And he's a space marine. Right. And you're like, oh, and he's a space marine. That's fucking cool. Like yeah. that, that is so fucking cool. So if you do something like that, that is a perfect pandering. I thought that was one of the stupidest looking models on the planet. It's a perfect pandering yeah. model though. Like if, like I said, you that model was made to game the system. So that's the competition. The competition is not actually doing a model to the best of your abilities. It's trying to win the competition so are you there to paint better or are you there to win it's just like any other tournament <laughs> well uh, yeah exactly and i th- that was the question that people brought up was that um i think one of the winners didn't sculpt his model like someone sculpted for him and he painted it right so it put him in a separate category or something it, it co-op would, i think is on, I think I something like that. yeah I, I don't know the exact thing but it's like at what what line do we draw here i mean it's like if if Tim Lyson sculpted me a model and I painted that model and I did a very and I did a good job on it. I mean, like, is it the paint job or is it the sculpting that's going to win? I think it's also dubious to put it in a separate category because that means that anyone who painted a model that they didn't sculpt themselves should also be in like the co-op category because their model was sculpted by Jess Goodwin yeah. or you know I, one I, of the Perrys. I, but that's why I honestly think that your own sculpted models, if it's um. Let's say if it's over 25% scratch built on the model. I'm not talking terrain or anything like that. I'm saying model itself that you entered into the competition. If it's over 25% scratch built, that needs to go into like an open category. Mm. Like there needs to be stock competition. Now, I often, you know, the, the Reaper painting competition at Gen Con is is kind of scrubby in comparison to to the I'd say Rush. super scrubby super scrubby in comparison <laughs> but the cool thing about that one is is that miniatures manufacturers give prizes for that one so soda pop reaper um dark heaven all of those model modeling companies they actually give out certain prizes so that if you paint one of their models they will get and it's the best one like let's say it's the best soda pop model they will give you soda pop prizes for painting the best one of their models. Which is cool. Which is awesome because that gives you incentive to paint their stock models. I mean, do something cool with them, but it's the stock model. You're not doing anything, you know, outside sure. the normal. But I mean, when you're talking cool and you're not, they want to drive traffic to their website. Yeah. So they're they want- the one putting up all the money for the competition. Yeah. And it's 10 G's. It is. It's huge. a lot of fucking money. It's a huge prize. Huge. So, yeah, huge prize. You know, I think... Uh, they're well within their rights to run the competition how they see fit and how they see fit is in baseline internet popularity contest. So you can be buttered about it. Can I paint a PewDiePie model? (laughs) Good luck. (laughs) Those are all sold out. They're pre-sold out. This Kickstarter made a bajillion dollars. It's a big, I just, I just put a turd on like a plinth (laughs) and I write PewDiePie. Put a a little YouTube sticker on it. Yeah, a YouTube sticker on it. (laughs) YouTube red. (laughs) Yes, there you go. Red. Uh, so, so, Were you also confused in thinking that YouTube Red was a porn thing? Because I <laughs> thought it was a porn thing. No, I already knew about Red Tube. Oh, okay, that's a totally. Well, that's what thing. I was like. I was like, did you? Is YouTube doing? Did porn they buy now? Red Tube? Oh, that's what I thought. I was like, oh man, this is really smart bow, on YouTube. Bow, bow. Yeah, uh, yeah. And so it's you know it's just an internet popularity contest. So that's the co- that's the challenge, and you can be butthurt about that as a painter, or you can rise to the challenge or don't enter into the competition. Well, when you got people flying in from Spain and France, right? To because they're trying to shark the fucking competition. Yeah. I yeah. mean, if you want to, if you want to roll, fucking roll. If you can't, then don't. And it, I mean, it sucks. Like, I'd like to be able to enter a painting competition, but you know what? I don't have those hobby skills. No. I can't sculpt. I can paint okay. Like, beyond that, fuck, I can't do that good of a job. Like, 
I don't know. I, I, my blending is like I can't even blend. <laughs> so like, do you even blend? No, I don't. <laughs> so like, I have no sculpting skills, and I can't blend. I'm out. I'm you out. Know? And, and I, I don't care if you're the best painter. If you're the best technical painter, it doesn't matter if you can't sculpt because no. that's part of the. Yeah, if you whether can't or not sculpt, they want to admit it. It's, yeah. it's part of the competition because it makes your model eye-catching. And people are like, oh, that thing looks cool. Well, that's what I always like. You know, Tim, I he used to basically be the golden demon. He he was the guy that was like the be-all, end-all when it came to that judging. And I would give him shit all the time about it because I'd be like, so you actually going to pick a GW model? Or are you gonna, <laughs> he's like, why would I? Well, yeah, didn't but didn't he always say that like the, the models that were sculpted always happened to also be the best painted? Yeah, that's what he always said. So. Yeah, I mean, there's I've seen a lot of the like a lot of the Slayer Sword winners like they definitely look sick and they looked like I don't know yeah, that guy. Better the guy who always won Atlanta. Mine is Hot Atlanta. <laughs> yeah, the guy who's won Atlanta hey, was a we mess. All, we all know Atlanta was a gimme, no matter what you entered. Remember uh, when? Do you remember when we had the plan that we were gonna sweep the Atlanta Golden Demon? <laughs> we were gonna all enter in Lord of the Rings. Rings yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> and uh, then, it wouldn't have been worth the trip to Atlanta. No, though. <laughs> no. They have a very nice convention center, though. Yeah, but it's, it's so hot. <laughs> it's oh lord, it's so hot down here in Atlanta. This flower, this Wilton. <laughs> <laughs> my stop yeah, too much for me <laughs> i do have the vapors <laughs> um, i've smelled your vapors i'm getting out of here <laughs> um so yeah that was the and the crystal bread it's it's cool i mean it's it's nice to look at the models it's and there was some really good stuff there this year i, I actually did think the second place model was cooler than the first place uh, I, I didn't even pay that much attention the to first it. place model was like a they were on a book and like it was two people like kind of embracing kind of thing it looked cool the other model was from uh warcraft and it was a oh yeah it, the big orc yeah he was yeah, fucking on his throne yeah that's a great i thought one. he looked sick and i th and i think i really do believe that he did not win because he, he didn't sculpt the model because that was the model that two people that the dude one dude sculpted and the other dude painted uh, and the winning model was painted and sculpted by the same person okay, so that was the thing i really i mean they didn't outright say it but i really think because he admitted that he the other person sculpted the model which i think he just shouldn't have done yeah like if you have someone else sculpt your model if you if, if they're not going to give you shit just say you did it yeah split the prize money with them you know no no, no one's the no one's the wiser well didn't remember when someone got busted for golden demon for like i do entering remember. entering someone that someone else painted though yes but that, that was that was the uh, the russian golden demon factory there was that for a little while there yeah. was uh, i think there was two guys who were entering russian paint mo russian painted models into the golden yeah. demon. i don't yeah. know how they got caught the, the one the Russian painter must have said something. He's like, "No, that's my model." Well, yeah, it must have been something like. I'm and they're doing like the Russian step, like <laughs> to the Golden Demon stage. <laughs> well, I think it was. Uh, I think it was. It probably was a commission job, and yeah. the, the painter didn't know that it, this guy was going to enter into a competition, so he probably pointed out like. He didn't paint that. Yeah, I painted I mean, that's, that. Yeah, that's my guess. You know, either that or Yet. either that or like some lady named Natalia, who some dude had been whipping into painting a model. You finally got sick of it. And was like, no, you didn't paint this model. I painted this model. No, that's why the Russians always went to Golden Demon so that they could steal all the toilet paper from the bathrooms at the convention center to send home to Mother Russia. Mm. Yes. Toilet paper for the motherland? Toilet paper and American blue jeans. Ah, uh, yes, your Yankee blue jeans. <laughs> Yankee Fuck blue you, Yankee blue jeans. <laughs> yes, exactly. Very good. All right, so uh, do I have anything? Oh, well, uh, Fantasy Flight had a big, uh, had a big present. It's for a sex wing? Yeah. A sex wing? Yeah, nice. sex wing. Yeah, like <laughs> you like it? I like yeah, it. I like, I like Sex Wing. Yeah. No, there was the tournament for X Wing was gigantic. Obviously, it was, it was the second biggest. It had to have been the second biggest tournament there outside of 40k. Uh, it was probably only smaller than the 40k team tournament. Well, I mean, like the 40k, all of the 40k tournaments are relatively huge. I would be surprised if the singles 40k tournament outstripped the size of the singles K uh, Sex Wing tournament. I didn't look at the numbers, but I would be surprised. I if didn't. Did. The, but the they like ha like Fantasy Flight had their own like separate room sure. of the convention hall it's the bit it's the most popular yeah. miniatures game there is makes yeah. sense i mean it may have been better than warma hordes it may have been probably but that i mean they were playing everything they had imperial assault sex wing uh what's what's the other one the armada armada mm -hmm. yeah they had all that's that the most interesting there. of those games to me yeah i still can't wrap my head around it i'm i wouldn't play because it's star wars but that, uh, that automatically discounts me like the first thing it's star wars i'm out well, my my big issue with it is is that I don't don't see where it's going. Uh, they were gonna make more toys. That's yeah, but, where it's but going. I mean, <laughs> but I mean, like overall, it's like there's Star Wars does not have a deep IP like for like spaceships. Like they have some cool ships. 
and they have a decent amount of them, but they're not like it's not like a deep bench. Like eventually they just hit a wall. For the big ships? Yeah. Yeah. No. I don't know. Like even the, the small ships, they don't have a deep they, bench. They've got a lot. Like there's a lot more small ships than there are for well, and, big espe- ships. and especially now that uh, Rogue One or Rouge One, because people can't spell. Yes, I saw that Rouge One is trending. I thought that's great. Rouge One is trending. Yeah, the uh, I don't know. They they could just keep the, it's Star Wars. They could just make up boopity boppies, and it's like I'm like oh, it's a, no no no. You can't do that anymore. Expanding universe bullshit, man. Can't do that it's shit. A, it's a B wing dash thirty three. Just like there are two X wing models. They're the same X wing model, but one's blue and one's red. I know. And there's a Tie fighter. There's two Tie fighters. They're the same model. One has like a green stripe. The other does not. Well, that's they were. More, that's more about like selling the cards and like the rule set with it as opposed to. But still, yeah. you're they. They can easily do like every ship can be infinite ships by just palette swapping. Yeah, I, I, I. If you think I'm wrong. You're wrong. <laughs> I'll I'll admit, you know. What, gonna, do, you, what they, do you think of the Rouge One trailer? Uh, I mean, it looks fine. It looks like, cool. I think it looked pretty cool. It's got Donnie. Uh, it's got Ip Man in it. I mean, it looks fine. Like I, they're I, really pandering to the Chinese on this one. <laughs> the, it it's, it's more. I mean, I'm sure it'll be more interesting than the Farce Awakens. <laughs> and there's no Kylo Ren, so I'll be really excited about that. I don't know about that. If Kyle, if they work Kylo Ren in this movie, I'm gonna murder J.J. Abrams. I will actually hunt him down. This is an actual threat. <laughs> I know you hate Kylo Ren, but women um, love him. I, no, and you also some fucking prepubescent boys. Prepubescent boys love Kylo everyone, Ren. You know what, Steve? Just admit it. Everyone loves Kylo Ren, but you. Mm. And you're okay with that because you get to stand. You get to stand against the. I don't think the so. wailing winds. I, I don't think everyone loves Kylo Ren, but me. I think pu- I think prepubescent boys and women like him because they think he's hot. Which is really weird because that Women guy's the funniest love looking guy. Love Adam Driver. He's the funniest looking dude ever. <laughs> I I I'm I am I am Kylo Ren neutral. I'm like I'm like a, a Kylo Ren uh, agnostic. I'm just kind of yeah. like I he's okay. Like the, the other characters were at least fun. Yeah. They were all nonsensical. None of the characters yeah, in the movie. It's a Star Wars movie. No character made sense. Not even the pre-existing characters made what sense. What about Poe Dameron? Uh, Poe Dameron made the least sense. Like, maybe the least sense. He's he, the best. He's the best. Why is he the best? I don't know. How did he escape from the thing? I don't know. He did. <laughs> <laughs> why, am, why are him and Finn really, really good friends now? I don't know. <laughs> the they, Force. They like each other. Yeah. Yeah. It's like the, 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 the threads of that movie are woven very loosely. Yeah. Uh, Just take me on that roller coaster ride, man. Just... Is that like it, it? It has it has fun, yeah. but there are people like the thing that pisses me off is people give that movie so much more credit than it deserves because it, it's got fun factor. And if you're if you're pure if you're purely judging it based on entertainment, you got me. Like yeah. you got me. I can't yeah. I can't shit on it for that. It was it was an entertaining movie. Does it got spectacle? Yes. Does it have heart? Eh, a little bit. And does it have humor? It had the humor. It had the humor. That's Good. all that matters. Those three things in a movie. Yep. That's what I'm looking if for. If that's what you're looking for, I can't touch in a, you. In a blockbuster. That's yeah. what I'm looking for. Those if, three that's things. That's what you're looking for? I can't touch it. But yeah. like everywhere else, but people like vehemently defend like things that like you just like, come on, you're stretching. Like, give me a fucking yeah. break. Like, slow it down. Okay. Let's let's I know you like that. I know you're really excited because it's a good Star Wars movie. I, and it, it hasn't happened in a long, long time. time. So you And it looks like we're gonna get but, two in a slow row. It down. Well the the subject matter of Rouge One oh. is far more interesting. Oh yeah. And but like I said, there better be some graphic both and violence. violence. <laughs> bothin on bothin violence. <laughs> yeah, and yeah, I'll take bothin on bothin pornography as well. I don't even know what bothins look like. Bothin boffin. Boffin Boffins. Wouldn't it be funny if like Boffins came up and they were like really, really racist looking and you're just like, oh, I I don't know how I feel about this. Oh man, they, they left too much Lucas in this movie. <laughs> Way too much Lucas here. <laughs> what, if they po- just, what if all the Boffins look like George Lucas? Lucas is voting for Trump. <laughs> Probably, yeah. <laughs> he's gonna show he's gonna show them what the trade agreements really mean. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think when Lucas walks around he's just like bum, bum, ba-da, ba-da, bum, bum, ba-da, ba-da, I think bum, Lucas ba-da, ba-da, is, Yeah, absolutely. Ba-da, ba-da. I think Lucas is off his fucking rocker insane. <laughs> They're friends. <laughs> just a fucking maniac. All right. Let's uh so we're done with the depth kind of wrap up. I have one I'll be there next year, I promise. Um so I I texted you this a, a little while ago. I don't know if you had, had to think about this, but uh, I I was thinking about games that we vehemently vehemently hate. Not just like like f- let's say Age of Sigmar. Age of Sigmar is kind of like where we. I can't vehemently hate Age of Sigmar. I think there's a lot of things that it does well. Yeah, it's like that's with most ga- most games. It's like I can't really hate this game. I just like certain games are just like it's so like. In your periphery, like in the like the rearview mirror, that you just like, I just don't care about that. Just, right, right. It's I can't, but 
games that we vehemently just it just like every time you see something from that game you're just like you just get mad <laughs> fuck that game what about uh, you you first okay so the one thing and this is the reason why i brought up is i fucking hate wild west exodus i hate everything <laughs> about wild west exodus every time i see something wild west exodus i just get so angry <laughs> let me just go through it the rules are stupid the models are racist and they have tiny tiny heads and poor sculpting um it's just like the the fan base. It's just like I hate Western stuff to begin with. Like most Western, and especially you combine it with sci-fi Western with like the contrite thing of like the South kind of won this war, so the North and the South are still kind of at war. And it's just like it just drives me absolutely up the wall. It's so overused and drives me nuts. I mean, plus the weird West has already been done perfectly with Deadlands. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. Well, Deadlands is is kind of cool, and it was well. Just, that's what I said. Yeah. The Weird West is done perfectly with Weird Deadlands. Like yeah. you're done. Like yeah. there doesn't need to be an, an alternate because it's the same. Like there's so much. This of, like, one uses cards, though. Dude, there's so much of Deadlands lore that's like wild. Like Wild West is just ripped off. Like yeah. the, they use an they use an alternate energy source. The Native Americans have mystic powers. Is it Tesla powered? Like, Dude, I I don't know. I also yeah. I, I join you in the sentiment of uh, but I'm not gonna pick it. I can't. It's not it's not one of my picks. It's what's, not one of my picks. What's what's one of your but, picks? But I like I, I do like that you have like a like a, like an all around like the yeah. game like every part of the game is offensive. Yeah. The fan base. The like, fan base is is pretty terrible as well. I also hate the fact that everyone uses like O scale terrain from like <laughs> from like train sets, and it's like they don't even make it look good. It's still all plasticky, and like even when they do fix it up i'm just like just the worst (laughs) they put neon signs on it just all right for me it's still gotta be my old standby malifo yeah i just fucking hate malifo like i hate it dude like it just fucking infuriates me and it's almost entirely because the models don't make any goddamn sense they're just a mishmash of some dude like writing down ideas and going like we're gonna put that together and like there's it's so it's like it's like a bad a poorly done version of rifts like the way rifts is presented it's like punk rock like heavy metal like 80 it's like 80s cool like it's like the rift rifts is dated as shit now but it's it's still 80s cool like it's still got retro 80s cool and it's done like that malifo is like like a bad version of it's like this is a big teddy bear because he's a nightmare monster and he's fighting a goblin and there's a (sighs) there's also a zombie and it's like they threw in everything and the kitchen sink unfortunately they took a shit in the sink before they threw it in so like that really just really irks me and like the rules they seem fine they seem like a ripoff of war machine and hordes so okay great like i don't care like the rules don't offend me, but the models just and like some of the sculpts aren't bad. Like they had one, uh, they had like Chinese rail, uh, yeah, Chinese tra- rain rail, railway rail workers, yeah, because that's fucking sensical. Um, like, but they look cool. Oh, but they're mystical. They have ancient Chinese secrets. Yeah, and there's also zombies. Uh, and then there's also like Victorian ladies of the dead. Like the fuck. Uh, I just, I just that's that's one. Uh, but I, you know why it looks like that? Because weird was making miniatures like a while, like a way way back yeah yeah weird was just making weird ass models because their name was weird so they just made things and like i guess their fan base who were who were buying their weird models which as standalone models just models like most of them look fine like there's nothing really offensive about like a little goblin with like a steampunk hat like sure cool whatever uh or one with like a like a blunderbuss and a fucking you know buckwheat and he's like hey, i'm a hillbilly goblin sure whatever so their models were all just weird just kind of thrown together and then people were like oh you should make a miniatures game so they like cobbled together a miniatures game using their existing model base so of course it's a smorgasbord of random crap because that's what their models were just a bunch of random crap oh. uh and, and like i said like the models themselves i can't i don't hate them like i really don't but when you put it together as a miniatures game it's just offensive it's, it's like a, it is it, it's, it's like stop <laughs> it's like please stop yeah, stop stop what you're doing bad <laughs> i you know and there's, i have a couple games but I've, i feel kind of bad because uh, two of the and two of the other ones i'm thinking of are are discontinued but i'm gonna go to my next one that i yeah, absolutely for fire, fire away discontinued games. hate every time i see it star trek attack wing <laughs> now i bought into this i bought into i was like okay this is gonna be great this is gonna be a, a really fun game it's going to it's you know it's well supported it's gonna be great that game bothers me 
on a level that's more so like I'm a Star Trek fan and this is why this game like just annoys me. It's because they none of the ships are to scale. Like Oh, the Enterprise. Well, I mean, scale, you kind of got to give them a break because scale is going to be fucked up in a game they're mass producing. No, no, no. But it's like offensively bad. Like, <laughs> like you can. Also, a lot of them are reused assets from the clicks. Games. That's exactly it. It's like they where you have fantasy flights putting together all these beautiful models. And I'm just like, God damn, I'd love to play this game. But I just I don't fucking care about Star Wars. You know, I just don't care. I don't want to like, oh, why can't they do this with Trek where they take awesome painted like really nice sculpts of like the enterprise i would pay 20 bucks to have a figure of a really nicely painted enterprise but it's whiz kids they don't do that I, That's exactly not thing. it's just it's so like it's just a mistreatment of something that yeah, i you, love you gotta paint it yourself that's the thing. If you want it to look good, it's WizKids. If you want it to look good, you got to paint it yourself. That's the rule. Ugh, it's so it's so. I would angry say I would be more vehemently angry about the fact that they gave away the best models to the tournament winners. Oh yeah, well that's and just then yeah spiraled into a like that's what killed the game. Yeah, well it's still like the number like three or four. Yeah, it's like, still chugging, but it's yeah. it's like you know it's going down. Yeah, it's well, still chugging. I mean, also I think the rule set is completely inappropriate for Star Trek. It, it, it is. I actually think that the... I think the rule set's completely inappropriate for X-Wing, to be honest. Like, it's World War Two or World War One biplane movement. So, like, your X-Wing is moving like a biplane. Yeah, but... But I people mean, don't know that because nobody played Wings of War. Yeah, <laughs> it was no, a World but, War yeah, One biplane I mean, who's game. Who's going to play a World War One biplane game? Exactly. But the the thing is is that, you know, Lucas aped all of that World War One and World War Two dogfighting stuff for... X-wing, it's sort of, the, the but like fighter combat anyway. You still like the ship's bank and stuff. It's like it's awkward. Like if you're flying in space, you just push a direction and your ship goes whoop. I, I like. There's no reason that you shouldn't have. I'm. I would be okay with that just because of how Lucas filmed that for the movies. I mean, that's what he 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 aped. I think it works fairly well for it. Doesn't work for now, Star Trek though. No, <laughs> no, no, no. You wouldn't have like a starship moving like that. Basically, if you wanted to play that game correctly, you'd have a, you'd have the Enterprise at one end of the board and you'd have like a Romulan warbird on the other end and you just sit there and fire at each other. That's what it would be. Yep. <laughs> yep absolutely. One ship blows up. Yeah. I, I think, I think it's cool because it brought a lot of cool Star Trek ships to like being able to collect it. Like, yeah, that's cool. Like I like being able to collect like, you know, the, I have actually have uh deep space nine, right? There. Well, yeah, but that deep space nine is like the best thing that it's they produce. Fucking awesome. <laughs> the board cube is pretty good too. The board cube is super sweet. I almost got that, but they didn't have it. Yeah. I was going to get it, but they didn't have it. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's fucking sweet. And like, there's a bunch of other cool like ships that they made Yeah, and but... for that aspect. Great. But for, as a game, I just don't think Star Trek <sighs> works like that. No, it doesn't. And actually probably the Armada rules would work a little bit better for it. I mean, granted, they don't have the fighters in uh, Star Trek. Armada would a modified Armada rule set would totally work for Star Trek. Yeah, because that's like the slower, like plotted movements. Yeah, like maybe a, like a, it'd be a, need to be a modified version, but like that could work. Because I mean, Star Trek does have you know space battles, but like they're they don't have fighters. Where also, like, there needs to be like a negotiation phase <laughs> where, where negotiations Picard, break down. Yeah, where where Picard has to like give his ultimatum to like <laughs> Kang. <laughs> You know, like, that's the way it's got to go. It would be pretty cool to have, like, a morale-based system where you have, like, you have ships that can, like, communicate to each other. Yeah. So, like, you can, at, you can like, socially attack a ship instead but, I mean, of that's, uh, just blowing it up. But that's just it. It's, like, <clears> start, like, I WizKids saw that what what Fantasy Flight was doing, and they're like, oh, this is such a, uh, this is, they're making money off this. We have the ships, too. We could just fucking do this. And then they put they out. They did it with D&D as well. They put out garbage. Oh, that D&D one is, is bad, too. But the, the, I. And, and the, the the most <laughs> offensive thing about of all about this is the amount of money that they think they can charge for this game. That just it's so. Oh, it's like fifteen bucks a ship. That's the I, that's the going rate. But for it's but you mean Star Trek? You know, Star Wars. Fifteen bucks and you get a gorgeously painted ship. Mm, gorgeous is overselling. It's it. pretty good. It's better <laughs> than probably ninety nine point nine nine percent of the people out there could paint. And then you put. This, I mean, it's gray and it's dry brushed. <laughs> I, I, and you, and? <laughs> and then you have the Star Trek ships, which look like they taste of Sri Lankan tears, is what they taste of. They would look better if they were painted the Sri Lankan. Like, yeah, they're probably painted by Cambodians or something, Laotians. All right, so do you have another one? Um, yeah, I mean, really, that's like my number one is just like Malifaux. Just it's always it's always it's, there. I, I don't. 
I don't have like a vehement rage against any other game uh, like that. Like oh. not not at that level. Like there's, there's lots of games I don't like. What about Yu-Gi-Oh? But, well, <laughs> oh yes. If you want to just say like if just games in general, not not restricting it to miniatures. Oh games, no, this is games in general. Oh, then fucking absolutely Yu-Gi-Oh. Are you kidding me? <laughs> Yu-Gi-Oh is a fucking cancer. Like the worst. <laughs> I hate Yu-Gi-Oh. So I was like I was... Jesus. That Yu-Gi-Oh. Like I would take twenty Malifos in exchange for Yu-Gi-Oh dying. <laughs> we were. I was sitting. Uh, I was monitor, my, uh, monitoring a test at my work, and this kid comes in, and he's like, "This kid in the hallway just gave me this sweet Yu-Gi-Oh mat." I was just like, "Oh, I should take a picture of that for Steve." <laughs> Fucking hate Yu-Gi-Oh, dude. It's so bad. Uh, everything about Yu-Gi-Oh is just the, the worst. Oh fuck, I can't. Oh, Yu-Gi-Oh is terrible. Well, what makes Yu-Gi-Oh worse than like than Pokemon? Uh. Okay, so I'll go. In, I'll go on every level. Okay. So one, the game mechanics. Okay. The game mechanics of Yu-Gi-Oh are fucking terrible. When they first started, they were fine. Like the very first set, like they were like simple magic. You know, it was like magic except your the combat tricks didn't come out of the hand. Like you had to like put them on the field first, so you would know if the other like. So you know, in magic, you can counter spell. Like yeah. you try and play a card, and I go, "Ha ha, counter spell! You can't do that." So it was similar to that, except. I put the I have to put the card face down on my side of the I field. I like how you're doing the two finger thing like they do in oh, Yu-Gi-Oh. Yeah. Yeah. It's it, any card game anime. Oh, yeah. Um you had to put the card face down and then pass to you your, like your turn. But when you start your turn, you see how many cards I have face down. You could be like, "Okay, well he's got three cards, so he might be able to counter my spell or he could destroy one of my monsters that I'm summoning." So like there's a little bit of counterplay there, but it's nice cuz it's like it's not a total blowout. Like if you play a dude and like it gets wrecked by one of my cards, you can't be like, "I didn't see that coming." You know, <laughs> so there's a there there was a little bit of counterplay there. That which is fine. And the game had like a pacing. Then like th the game power creep was so insane. They, like, <laughs> if people think, like, the 40k power creep is bad, Yu-Gi-Oh! is, like, a light, like, fucking warp 10 in comparison. The, every set that comes out, like, every new block is just so broke. The other stuff is not only invalidated, it's actually worthless. Like, the value goes to nothing. <laughs> so there's no value on the secondary market because the game's mechanics are broke. And, of course, there's shenanigans. Like, just trying to wrap your head. Like, I knew how to play Yu-Gi-Oh. I thought I did. I thought I knew all the rules. Turns out I don't know fucking shit about Yu-Gi-Oh because, well, uh, Yu-Gi-Oh has a million billion made-up rules now. And there's no reminder text. So if you don't see, like, if you just don't know what the card does, it's like, mm, like, what does a synchro summon mean? Pfft, I don't know. Like, magic, when they do a new rule, they put reminder text on it. So it'll say, like, hexproof. This card cannot be targeted by spells your opponent controls. Or spells and abilities your opponent controls. It says it on the card. You're like, oh, okay. And then some some, some cards, when they're, like, a higher rarity, they'll just say hexproof. Not the reminder text. But there's still that initial card that has the reminder text. Ugh. So that, that that's, that's a shitter. Two, the secondary market value is fucking awful. Because card comes out, it's $300, it's a chase rare. The Konami either bans it or releases it in six months as a promo card or like a reprint for like a dollar. So there's no value in retaining retaining any Yugi, Yugi cards ever. It's worth nothing. It's like your cards are worth money one day and then they're worth absolutely nothing the next. There's no longevity to any of their collectability. Fucking terrible. That's the worst thing out of a collectible card game. Like there's no value there. It's just like, come on. Uh, so the, in addition to that, the player base, there are like the most degenerate player base like if i'm talking to a store and they're like oh yeah the yugo kids came in so like i just like they stole a whole bunch of shit like they steal they leave garbage everywhere like they're the worst because it attracts a, a younger audience than most other games but they, it attracts like the like perfect age demographic where they're just hooligans hooligans right it, 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 attra Ruffians. it attracts a hooligan age demographic where it's like you've got like the 13 year olds to 18 year olds give or take and then some guys who are skew older not many skew younger uh and like they just they're just always hooligans whereas like a game like pokemon does skew like a huge age range so does magic but they don't have they just they it's not that like compressed only people around this age only play people the game. age 13 to uh, 8 to 13 play play Yu -Gi -Oh. right exactly and it's just like they're always the worst and they're you know Thievery happens, like Yu-Gi-Oh! Thievery is rampant. And just to give you an idea, the only game currently 
that has multiple assault and weapon violations as reasons for lifetime bans is Yu-Gi-Oh. <laughs> it's the only card game in existence that currently uh, shares that feature, which is one of the reasons why it's just not playing Force of Will, because all the people quitting Yu-Gi-Oh are moving to Force of Will. Oh, okay. So that's another reason uh, strike against Force of Will. Um, yeah, so Yugi's fucking awful. I can't stand it. Um terrible and it's a shame because like i said it was a fun little game when it came out it was new i was like guys the game's fun and then it like became this mess and then of course it's made by konami who i uh, loathe konami like konami is a terrible company they're the worst i fucking hate konami so there's a lot of things striking against Yu-Gi-Oh. and now in terms of pokemon the card game i actually just recently got back into pokemon the card game after having not played it since it came out in you know the 90s uh Pokemon the card game plays like vintage Magic the Gathering, on, except in sorcery speed. So you can only do stuff on your turn. You can't do stuff on your opponent's turn. But as far as like the power level of the cards, it's it feels like I'm playing with thousands of dollars worth of vintage Magic cards. <laughs> because the cards in Pokemon are ridiculously overpowered. So it's it's actually pretty fun. Because they're like, like a card that would be like... You know, Ancestral Recall example uh, is like a 200, and 200 plus easy, 200 plus dollar card easily, which is pay one blue, draw three cards. Fucking broke. Super broken card. And it's at $200 is probably underselling it. It's one of the power nine. So it's, uh, you know, it's a fortune. Only legal and vintage. You can only play one restricted. There's a card in Pokemon that costs nothing, draws three cards, unplayably weak. <laughs> <laughs> so so it is the same card but in Pokemon it is unplayably weak and in in Magic it's worth hundreds and hundreds of dollars. Well I don't want to talk about Pokemon anymore. Let's talk about I don't have many uh um other things that I absolutely vehemently hate. But hey you asked. <laughs> I know. But I do have a, well the um most of cuz most of the mini games that I hate usually end up going under pretty quickly um all quite on the Martian front. Um the Pre-painted confrontation. Uh, most. Oh, that's such a shame. Yeah. Poor Rackham. God damn it! Like that just <laughs> angers and upsets me. Um, eight... is, why you have enough? You have enough miniatures where you could relaunch the company. I on could your own. relaunch the company <laughs> on my own. Um, uh, what was the other one? Um, um, the AT43. Speaking of Rackham, like the newer AT43. So when that free game first came out, I was like, oh, "This is pretty cool." And then that game just took a big turd slide down the back of my underwear um but there's one game that if i see uh for sale like in any used book one rpg that if i see for sale in any rpg store or is or it iron book, claw no oh. no 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 it is the wizards of the coast d20 star wars system it just i look at that and it makes me so angry <laughs> because of what they fucking did to that west end license well one of the most fun not perfect but just in, like well-rounded rpgs that i had in the 90s i will i all i can all i can do is throw out that they couldn't have used the west end system because they bought the license to star wars not, not the west end role well i no, no no i know that but on the other hand i'd like to throw out that was actually one of the best d20 rule sets around oh it is <laughs> it is no, it's like if the rule set is great because they I'm sure they reuse that engine on a lot of different things. Actually, Star Wars was unique in many ways. Oh. Um, one of the best things about it is that it introduced a, the concept of um, uh, criticals cutting through vitality. So instead of having hit points, you had vitality, which are the same thing as hit points, except you had two scores. You had vitality and you had your hit points. Uh, hit points were equal to your constitution. So if you're con 12, you have 12 oh. HP. Yeah. And your vitality is whatever your class is. So, like, uh, Jedi has, like, you know, you start with 20 and you get D8 plus your constitution modifier per level. So, like, say you're level 5, you'll have, like, 44 vitality and 10, uh, 10 hit points. When you do a critical in that Star Wars game, instead of doing double damage or whatever, you just bypass the vitality and do damage straight to hit points. The problem is... Which is, I mean, fantastic. Like, that's a great modification to D20. The problem with that system, with that system overall is, is that it was Jedi heavy. And it was based solely on the prequels. Oh, yeah. Star Wars. Fuck that shit. <laughs> sure. I don't give a fuck about the Star Wars part. I'm just talking about, like, pure mechanics. Well, yeah. Mechanics were good. I don't give a shit about mechanics. That's what I care I wanna, about. <laughs> I want to role play as a smuggler going across the galaxy. Hey, your smuggler just got killed by a Jedi. Jedi. I don't open a new character. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Fuck that. 
All right. Do you have anything else that you hate? Because we're running low on time. I don't know. Everything. We can, you know what? We'll pick it up on the next cast. That's what we'll start with. <laughs> Other shit that we hate. No, I, I pretty much i am exhausted on like on like the, the shit that I really hate. Oh, I've got an unending amount. I can just, I'll just keep Especially going. if I open it up to RPGs and card games. Yeah, if you, that's it. If you, if you, if you pigeonhole me in miniatures games, I really just got Malifaux. But like, if you're if we're going into the board game RPG, like if we're going there, man, we could be we could this could be our this could be our first nine hour podcast. <laughs> BattleTech. <laughs> Have you ever rolled a fucking character in BattleTech? BattleTech. Why? Why? <laughs> we haven't done that in a while. We just did. Oh, there was a there was um the guys who were doing who were doing that fifteen millimeter sci fi game, uh, the robot mech game. Uh, they were at Adepticon. I can't remember the name of it, but that was actually pretty cool. I got to got Robot to see that being game. Yeah, they just released Osprey. Just released the rules. Osprey was there, kind of enforced with like a bunch of their mini sets and rules I don't and all know. that. They they're you'd like a lot of their stuff. It's all smally skirmishy stuff. All right. all right, so go to planetarbitrary.com for your planet arbitrary needs. You can follow me on Twitter at planet arbitrary. You can follow Steve on the Game Classy Facebook page backslash Game Classy Podcast. Um, you could also like, comment, and subscribe to our Game Classy YouTube channel. On the YouTube channel, you not only get Game Classy, but you also get Comic Book Logic, one of our sister podcasts hosted by myself with my co-host Kevin, where we talk about comic book movies. We just finished Batman v Superman, if you're interested in hearing what we had to say about that. Two and a half hours on that movie we spent uh, right, almost then. as long as the movie itself. We're going to do 300 next, so you'll see that next weekend. Um you can also help out our podcast on uh, iTunes. Uh, you like, comment, subscribe on iTunes. And another thing that you can, another podcast you can check out is Patch Retro View Game Review Podcast, aka the Play On Podcast, where Steve and Pat B of Pat B's Retro Video Game Review Podcast talk about video games, mostly about why Nintendo is changing their logo. Did you guys spend a lot of time talking about that, Steve? No, not at all. Okay. He's just, Steve's just shaking his head. He doesn't want to talk about Nintendo. I'm saving that for a different podcast. You, say you may have heard of it. <laughs> is, is it Patch Retro Video Game Review Podcast, a.k.a. Play On? Maybe. Maybe. Uh, and I don't know. Pat, Pat just bought a new house, so he's going to have to... He's going to get the, the whole Vigi game room taken care of now. I'm excited about that. I've been telling him because his house currently has like a massive... The, the house he was renting had a massive basement. And he's like, oh, I don't want to put my stuff down there. It's going to get wet. <laughs> and I'm like... Okay, it's like you're on a hill, so I don't think that's gonna happen. But okay, and then he buys a house, and he's like, "I'm gonna, I'm gonna put this up in the basement." <laughs> like, <sighs> I think that was a kaiju just came out of you. Mm, it's true. Um, I'm ready to be attacked by a giant robot. Gypsy Danger's coming for me. By the way, there's a, there's a comic book character out there. Uh, his name is American Kaiju, and he's just like a big Godzilla looking guy with a big American flag painted on his chest, and he just goes, "You." <laughs> I think it'd be you as a kaiju. Probably. Um, so, Steve, until next time. Her. I'm breaking up with you. Me. Is it because I say, uh oh, SpaghettiOs when things go wrong? Her. Yeah. Me. Uh oh, SpaghettiOs. <laughs> Game Classy. <laughs>